My name is José Sérgio Almeida. I'm from the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research, IMP, from São José dos Campos, São Paulo, Brazil. And today I'm going to talk about spacecraft environmental tests. Spacecraft environmental tests are very, very important. They are critical in any space program because they can prove, they can show that the spacecraft is ready for launching and for orbital operation. So here I'm going to present some key concepts. The design and build of spacecraft is very, very much associated and dependent to its life cycle environment. For example, during the launch phase, the spacecraft will face a huge uh, level of vibration produced by the, the engine firing of the rockets. So the combustion of the uh, fuel produces a lot of vibration. So the spacecraft is set on top of the rockets. We also feel this vibration from the rockets. Now while in space, the spacecraft will face the high vacuum environment, so very low pressure, and also the high and low temperature produced by the condition of space. When the spacecraft faces the sun, it receives a lot of energy from the sun radiation. The solar radiation hitting the spacecraft can heat up the spacecraft a lot. And by the time the spacecraft is in eclipse mode, it does not see the sun anymore, see the black cold space and it can lose heat quickly. So its parts can reach very low temperature very quickly. So this is very harsh environmental space. Even the vacuum condition, the material must be qualified for this purpose, must be stable in vacuum conditions. The environmental issue the spacecraft we face, so is, as I said, the stress from the launching. Besides of the uh, engine firing uh, of the, uh, uh, the rockets, we also have atmospheric drag of the uh, rocket hitting the uh, atmosphere going to the space. This also produces a lot of vibration. And during the launch phase also we have, we could have some electromagnetic interference with the communication from the towers to the uh, rockets that could influence somehow the, uh, the spacecraft inside the rockets. So we have to be careful with this as well because sometimes the spacecraft is turned, powered on during, during this launch phase so we must be sure that this will not affect uh, the spacecraft. By the time the spacecraft is being ejected from the last stage of the rockets, this typically is made by using springs. So the, some pyrotechnic device, they go off and some springs will release the spacecraft from the ring of the last stage of the uh, rockets. This, this kind of feature usually produce a kind of shock to the spacecraft and this shock must be uh, reproduced in the laboratory to ensure that the spacecraft can survive this level of shock. This picture here shows uh, the condition of the uh, spacecraft in orbital flight. Once the spacecraft is orbital flight, it's facing the uh, high vacuum condition, can reach 10 to minus 10, 10 to minus 12, or higher vacuum condition in space. That means that the uh, exposed materials that the spacecraft has made must be uh, compatible with this environment in space. Otherwise, you can just modify or sublimate sometimes and change their properties. So, it must be compatible with this situation. Resins are a typical example of this kind of uh, materials and conditions. They, 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 they must be stable in this kind of environment. Also, some pressurized sealed components like tanks will make sure they don't leak in these high vacuum conditions so we have to test them in ground in the laboratory so we call outgassing phenomenon and uh, that takes place from the surface of the uh, uh, material exposed to the uh, harsh of the high vacuum of the space now I'll talk about the high temperature we can face here in this image we can have an example of the uh, amount of energy arriving and hitting the spacecraft directly from the sun. But also, 
the Earth produces radiation as well, that we also hit the spacecraft. This be, must be accounted as well in the calculation. Besides of that, some region of the planet can have a reflection of the sunshine, of the radiation, that can hit back to the spacecraft, we call albedo, that in average is about 30% of the solar radiation hit the Earth's surface, can go back to the spacecraft as well. So I have to sum that, consider that as well. Okay? So all these inputs must be uh, uh, analyzed and considering during the uh, thermal analysis and uh, modeling of a spacecraft. So now, when the spacecraft goes in eclipse mode, go the other side of the Earth, is going to face the deep space, black deep space. So it does not see the sun anymore. So that means that if the deep space is considered a very cold uh, condition, like 4 or 3 Kelvin temperature, so the spacecraft was warm, it will lose uh, heat to the deep space. So very easily it can cool down quickly, like some uh, external part of spacecraft, uh, for example the solar panel, solar rays, because they have low thermal mass, they are more exposed on the spacecraft, they can cool down quickly to, let's say, for example, minus 100 degrees Celsius, very quickly. So this situation must be considered during the uh, environmental tests done in the laboratory. We also have other space environmental issues, like the Van Halen radiation belts, where solar cells, integration circuits, and sensors can be damaged by radiation. For example, solar energetic particles uh, can have damage of semiconductors and dielectrics, like solar panels, micro electronics, or other devices, and also cosmic rays, where uh, ions or electromagnetic radiations striking microelectronic device can damage them. But I'm not going to go into details in this one here because typically these considerations are taken during the manufacturing of the component itself themselves, so we do not do environmental tests of them in the laboratory in our case. So the spacecraft must be designed to withstand the stress of launch and space flights. With this, we can reproduce severe and comprehensive lab tests uh, as required. So, because in most cases, the parts cannot be replaced after launching the spacecraft. Because virtually they are, are orbiting in high altitude, so it's very, very difficult to go there, grab a spacecraft and do some maintenance on spacecraft. With this, we, can, we have to do several models to build and qualify their design. So typically, we have the uh, engineering model, we have a radiological model, a structural model, and a thermal model as a minimum. And then we go for the flight model that will incorporate all these pre-qualified designs. This is very typical in a sequence of producing a spacecraft. So let's talk a little bit about the engineering model. So the engineering model is exactly in the same shape and size of a full spacecraft, the real one. But in this particular model, we do not have the components, the space qualified components. It's just empty of components. But it represents the correct layout of the equipment, the same layout. And uh, the subsystems are installed in there. But these subsystems are not are made by pre qualified space uh, application components. We don't worry about that. But all harness and cabling are also installed and properly root in spacecraft. Why? Because we want to just test, verify the first functioning of the spacecraft. Um, we're not concerned at this moment here if they are going to operate properly in space. We just want to know if the main, primarily, uh, first idea of the spacecraft will work properly in terms of electronics and functioning of the spacecraft in the ground. Normally, we do not include in this module the propulsion system, solar array, solar panels, and antennas. We just want to know how the spacecraft is going to be with electronic uh, equipment installed inside. Then the radio electrical module, again, is the full size uh, scale, the, 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 the same size as the full spacecraft. And the material, the structure, and the geometry is, the, is very close and same of the flight model. So it's the same size. 
does not carry any any electronic components at all. I'm not, we're not concerned about this uh, this model of rate electrical model, but it must represent the exact layout of the structural elements. Uh, and the main species like the uh, uh, electronic boxes, as dummies, they are installed in correct layout. Here we are concerning about the, uh, the uh, region, the parts, the section of the spacecraft is going to contain the subsystem because we are going analyze this here how the compartments are isolated electromagnetic talking from each other. So we have to reproduce this kind of model here. The structural model is very, very important. Once more, we have a full-scale size spacecraft. Again, this model does not carry any electronic components. We're not concerning, not worried about the functioning of the spacecraft here. Only the structural spacecraft must be okay, must be functioning fine to, to survive to the, uh, F, to the uh, strength of the uh, launching moment. But here he carries masses dummy masses in place of the real subsystem of the spacecraft. The layout must be exactly the same and the center of gravity of the subsystem must be exactly the same because we are going to analyze the circular part of the spacecraft. And this model here must be fully instrumented with sensors, uh, vibration sensors, to measure the level of vibration in each critical important part of the spacecraft. Okay? We use accelerometers, piezoelectric accelerometers normally start at the point to measure the level of vibration. So it's fully instrumented for that purpose. Now the thermal model. Here we are concerning only with the temperature conditioning inside the spacecraft, all the thermal condition of spacecraft. So once more we produce another satellite, it's a full-size satellite, but again does not carry any electronic components. I'm not concerned about the electronic function of the spacecraft. But you have to have the same layout of the real next future flight, uh, flight model spacecraft. So it carries dummy box in place of the subsystem and other items. But inside the dummy box, we, instead of electronics, we put some uh, heaters, we call skin heaters. These are going to dissipate the expected heat loads from each part of the subsystem of the spacecraft. That's what I'm concerned now. I'm going to reproduce the thermal dissipation of the flight model in each part of the spacecraft because the thermal model is going to analyze this kind of dissipation, right? So again, this model here must be fully instrumented with temperature sensors in several critical parts of the spacecraft. Sometimes you can install 1000 sensors possible install in a large spacecraft because I want to know the temperature in each critical part of the spacecraft. We use thermocouples and RTDs sometimes to measure the temperature of the points to compare with the thermal modeling of the spacecraft, the computer thermal modeling spacecraft. We have to compare the practical results in the laboratory with the spec temperature produced by the thermal modeling. And sometimes we also put some heat flux sensors because the thermal guys, they want to know the amount of heat flux heating arriving to the spacecraft or exiting the spacecraft. Okay? So sometimes we use heat flux sensors as well during the thermal test of the spacecraft.